Welcome to Big Blue Draft Night Live presented by Van Heusen. Hello, Giants fans. We are still here with the 99th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft. The New York football Giants go offensive line once again, and they select Matt Parrott out of the University of Connecticut. Bob Popo, along with Super Bowl champions David Deal and Sean O'Hara. All right, guys, we threw your little curveball with the second round pick when the Giants went with a safety, but now we head to your wheelhouse, uh, the offensive line. And uh, David Deal, your impressions of Parrott, who was a four year starter at UConn. Well, he started off his first two years at left tackle and then moved over to the right tackle position. So you like that he has versatility and has played both sides. You know, in the run game, can uncoil his hips, get underneath defenders, you know, get up to the second level and make sure that he keeps himself in the distance of where a defensive linebacker or a defensive end is going to be at, not where he's at at that time. And the one thing that you do understand about him is he has all the size and techniques and fundamentals to get to this point, but they need to be refined. We're talking about a player that didn't start playing football until his senior year of high school. So when you look at somebody this size with this amount of range that can continue to work on his leverage and his pass sets and make sure that he refines tying his hands and his feet together, I think that he's a project. But down the road, this is definitely a player that could be a starter for the New York Giants. Sean, uh, your take on the fact that, uh, you know, the Giants brought in a player who was versatile with Andrew Thomas having started his career at right tackle, then playing – the last two years at left tackle. Parrott's the opposite. Uh, he started at left tackle. He's played the last two years at right tackle, but he's got two full years of starting on each side. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this off with what Dave Gettleman talked about when he said with this draft he was going to fix the offensive line once and for all. And, and I look at Matt Parrott, and this pick is – purely about building this offensive line for the future. Andrew Thomas was about right now. Andrew Thomas is ready to play. He's a week one guy. Matt Parrott is a little bit more of a developmental guy. And, and I think the first thing that comes to mind when you see him on film and when you think of him as a tackle is this kid is an unbelievable athlete. He's a former basketball player. He really didn't even start playing football until he got to college. So he's still a little bit raw, has a lot of room for growth there, but he is an unbelievable athlete, really good feet, He's really long. So both tackles that Dave Gettleman drafted with Andrew Thomas and Matt Parrick, they had the two longest arms in the entire draft. So it's all about length. It's all about the tackle position, keeping those defenders away. And, Dave, you know how big of a deal that is as tackles. If you can find a way to have long arms and have a good punch and really sweet feet, you really have a chance at having a long career. So Matt Parrick, obviously – for the Giants, you know, Andrew Thomas is going to be a plug-in and play guy right away. But when you look at this Giants building this offensive roster, I think Matt Parrott can be somebody that they can develop. He's going to need another year, I think, to get a little bit stronger, add a little bit of, of upper body strength uh, to go along with those athletic feet. Clearly, the Giants are, are looking towards not down the road, not just this year fixing the offensive line, but this is trying to fix the offensive line for the next three or four years. So Matt Parrott, uh, the second offensive tackle taken by the Giants here in this draft. Look, it was one of those situations for this football team, David, where you know they traded out of one of their third-round picks in the Leonard Williams deal. There were some chances of the Giants maybe grabbing a center, but guys that potentially they liked were off the board. Uh, so they revisit with this offensive line. Uh, they don't go after a pass rusher. Some of the better pass rushers probably came off the board earlier in this round as well. I think it probably makes sense, right, to go with an offensive tackle because you also have Cam Fleming sitting there in the holder spot. Yeah, it definitely makes sense for the Giants to go out and draft an offensive tackle. You know, we were talking about the centers earlier in the last aspect of this, and they're all off the boards. The one that we thought that could step in and fill that void and, and compete for the starting job for the New York Giants. Having said that, now that they drafted another offensive tackle, it leads you to believe that they're going to move Nick Gates to the interior to where he's going to be competing for that center position long term. So it gives not only the Giants versatility to build long term at the tackle position with the growth of Pert, but what it does is it allows you to move another player on the interior and really bolster this roster and build competition with this offensive line knowing that there's going to be no scholarships anymore and that you're going to have to earn your right to be on this 53-man roster. Sean, obviously uh, balance, versatility is something that is, has been, you know, drummed into sort of the mantra of this new coaching staff. And, 
you know, we've seen the Giants draft now three players that are very multiple, whether it's Xavier McKinney in the second round, now Matt Parrott here in the third round as an offensive lineman, and even their first round draft pick. So I would assume as we move forward in this draft and as we get into the fourth round and the rest of this draft, that that's sort of the philosophy or at least the dots that fans and we can connect as far as who the Giants are looking at to continue to add to this roster. Yeah, no doubt about it. The, you know, the, the opportunity to play multiple positions uh, definitely played a factor with Xavier McKinney. Uh, you know, he, we, he's been referred to as a Swiss Army knife, uh, as a safety. And really, I went back and watched a little bit of extra film after the Giants drafted him. I mean, he played a lot more down in the box. Um, almost like a, a four-one-six nickel linebacker than than I really expected. Uh, so he's going to bring a lot of versatility uh, to to this Giants defense. But for Andrew Thomas, you know, I, I think his ability to we've talked about it before. He started out as a right tackle as a true freshman, um, and then morphed over as a left tackle. And I think when you look at at that aspect of it, that versatility, that's a huge component of who the Giants are trying to draft. Uh, for Matt Parrott, I think it'll be interesting to see uh, how he develops. Uh, obviously, he's more of a right tackle. I don't see him playing left tackle, but uh, certainly w- when you want to add competition to the roster, add competition to certain position groups, it definitely makes the team better. We're awaiting uh, Matt Parrott, drafted by the Giants with the 99th overall pick in the 2020 NFL Draft. He's an offensive lineman, a tackle from UConn. Uh, he's tall. Uh, he's big, he's strong, he's got a big wingspan, and he started four years in college. So he's coming in with a lot of experience. And, <laughs> guys, even though it's not SEC football, um, he got a lot of reps of seeing it live and dealing with pressure. And I think that's something that I'm sure the Giants took into the equation when they were scouting him. Sean, I mean, you can't get away from the fact that being on the field, you can practice all you want, you can study film all you want, You can work on all these things, but what happens when it's real? He's got a lot of real experience under his belt. Yeah, experience goes a long way. Uh, You know, certainly uh, when you're playing tackle, you're kind of out on an island a number of times. And look, there's no lonelier place for an offensive tackle than third and long on the road in the silent count. So, you know, if you've been there and done that, I think it definitely builds confidence. But the same things that we said about Andrew Thomas coming to the Giants apply to Matt Parrott. And when you th- the things we talked about were what a great opportunity to come in. You've got a veteran left tackle and Nate Solder who's won Super Bowls, who's been a Pro Bowl player. You've got Mark Colombo, a great offensive line coach who was a great offensive tackle, a first-round pick himself. So you've got a, a big, tall guy, Mark Colombo, who's probably just as tall and, and long as Matt Parrott. He can teach him some of those little techniques and, and little things that helped him when he was a player, he can show him, hey, look, here's how you have a tilt. Here's how you, you know, with your long arms, you've got to use that range and use that length to your advantage. So no doubt he's going to get some great tutelage. You mentioned Cameron Fleming. Cameron Fleming has played a lot of good football throughout his career. He, he's not been a full-time starter, but he stepped up to the plate when his number was called. He started games last year uh, for the Dallas Cowboys when Tyron Smith went down. So he has a lot of value, a lot of experience that I know he can share. This draft, draft pick feels a lot like when the Giants drafted Will Beatty in the second round years ago. Will Beatty came in from UConn, and he was unbelievably athletic. There were times where I saw Will Beatty recover in one-on-one pass drills that I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody recover from. He totally would whiff with his hands. Um, he would overset, and yet some way he would find a way to athletically recover. And I think that's one skill that a lot of tackles – aspire to have that recoverability and you don't always miss you connect with your with your punch sometimes you have to have a second punch and you've got to have a, a counter move because these guys get paid too and you know I, to see will Beatty progress and and for him to be able to come in and not have to play right away i think certainly helped him and helped build his confidence um obviously coming from uconn you know there were times where i, I think he was you know he, his eyes were big and, and, and he kind of looked around and said, wow, you know, these are some good some good pass rush I'm going up against in practice and on game day. Um, I, I think Matt will be fine in that category, and, and I think he'll, he'll have some great veteran leadership to kind of lean on. Hey, fans uh, watching out there on the Giants YouTube channel, Giants.com and the Giants app, don't forget, throughout these three days, calling on all fans out there, 
and communities to donate through the NFL Draftathon to one central fund benefiting several COVID-19 relief efforts selected by the NFL Foundation. We know everyone across the country is feeling the impact from COVID-19 and our thoughts are with each and every person who has been affected. You can make your donations. Simply go to NFL.com slash relief. Welcome Matt Parrott out of the University of Connecticut, selected by the Giants in the third round of the 2020 draft. And uh, Matt, congratulations on becoming a member of the New York football Giants. What was the first reaction you had when you got the call that you were going to be a New York Giant? <laughs> I was very speechless because, you know, <laughs> uh, growing up in New York and have the opportunity, you know, to put on the blue, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's always been a dream of mine. And so it's, it's crazy that I got, you know, I'm still speechless about it. <laughs> All right, O'Hara, you're first. Matt, congratulations. Uh, welcome to the New York Giants family. Uh, take us through what, what this was like for you. D did you have conversations with the Giants leading up to the draft? And uh, talk to us a little bit about what you've been doing from a workout standpoint during this, you know, transitional offseason period. Um, so they uh, they reached out during this time. Um, uh, and, um, you know, during this time for the workout period, uh, you know, I'm coordinating with a strength coach right now. Um, and uh, he's uh, based out of New Jersey. And uh, he's uh, he's able to give me workouts to an app. So um, I'm able to, you know, get after it. And um, with the help of my brother, uh, I just finished it actually today, actually. Uh, <laughs> I was, uh, we were able to put a squat rack down in my basement. You know, obviously from the tri-state area at home right now in New York, played at Connecticut. You know, one of the things for yourself is obviously, did you ever think that the Giants were going to be a team that draft you? And two, after the combine, after all the different things that you've went through working out, what are the techniques and fundamental things that you're going to start working on to get yourself prepared for when OTAs and minicamps do start? Um, so, I mean, it's always been a dream of mine. Uh, like I said, just growing up in the tri-state area. Um, you know, just, you know, I've been a Giants fan since I moved to New York. <laughs> uh, so it's always been a dream. And uh, things I want to work on, just, um, you know, just overall just become a better student of the game. And, um, you know, just fine-tuning everything when it regards to coming to technique, um, you know, being um, that much more dominant as an offensive lineman, uh, working on, uh, you know, uh, footwork, um, uh, hand placement, the, everything. Just, just, just everything I need to do to become a dominant player. So speaking of, of the technique work, obviously, um, you know, you're, you're extremely athletic. Uh, you've got a basketball background. How has that helped you uh, as a tackle, and how has that helped you with some of your footwork? Uh, so, I mean, when you play basketball, you know, <laughs> you got to have footwork to play the sport, especially when you know, you work in the post most of the time. Uh, I feel like, you know, uh, just having that uh, hand-eye coordination as well also helped. Um, but I feel like – I feel like – I really feel like there's a – a lot of tangible things you could, um, you know, transfer over from basketball to football, and that's what helped me to get to where I am right now. Yeah. It's crazy. You're still thinking about it. I want to know who called you from the New York Giants, and what was the message when you did get drafted? Uh so uh, the head coach, uh, he reached out. Um, oh, I'm sorry. So still, still, still feel very surreal. I'm, not, I'm sorry. I don't mean to do this right now. <laughs> and I'm like, this, this was my reaction. Honestly, very, be very honest with you right now. Uh, it, it was amazing. Um, you know, uh, gosh, it's, it's awesome. Cause I just, I just want to get ready to work. I just want to work right now, man. I just want to get after it. Did they, did they show a lot of interest in you in this process leading up to it? Um, yeah, like I said, we, uh, we've had, uh, conversations, um, and, uh, you know, just, just, just want to get ready to work, man. It's just, it's honestly, that's all my mindset is right now. All right, man, I'm going to put you on the spot right now, okay? Sure. Who's your favorite New York Giants offensive lineman of all time? Offensive lineman of all time? <laughs> oh, uh, dang, you put me on the spot. Yeah, think about this well, one. it better be a tackle. It better be a tackle. <laughs> it better be. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, dang, I want to go old school on you guys. Let's see. Well, Please go. Yeah, uh, come on, go, go old school. Go old school. Come on. Yeah. Go I said we're 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 young, man. We got, you can go old school. That's fine. I'm allowed to. Yeah, go. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right. um, Absolutely. Off the top of my head, uh, geez, man. 
I don't know who to pick. I don't want to pick wrong, and then you know this gets ears out. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, no, go ahead. It's just between uh, us. Yeah, no, you gotta pick one. I mean, <laughs> I mean, go. I mean, growing up, uh, probably like the the biggest, you know, one of my biggest drives at UConn has kind of been like a personal thing for me, um, you know, because uh, he he was the first one to really do it big at UConn, and like you know, he was the first really original giant uh, from UConn. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he, he was kind of like the guy I wanted to beat out no matter what. And I kind of like, you know, put him to bed. Uh, uh, not not necessarily saying he's one of the greats that were to do it, but, you know, the guy that kind of fueled my fire to push my, to push my, you know, that much more as an offensive tackle. Um, you know, I, I, um, I know, I know it's going to sound weird, but, you know, I really just wanted to beat out, uh, what's his name, Will Beatty and everything because, you know, he was the guy to come out here and do it. And um, I, I, really, <laughs> I just wanted to beat him out and do it, and, you know, Coming to the Giants, I'm definitely definitely gonna put it all to make sure that you know. Whatever. Hey Matt, don't don't worry about it because you know, David Deal right here beat him out twice. David was the starting left tackle for two. <laughs> <laughs> I think you got to like it. I think you like it, but that, that that was kind of very near and dear to my heart. Um, you know, just just, just wanted to beat him out, uh, especially because you know he, he came from UConn, and he went to the Giants, and like you know that 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 was one of the first things I thought about. Like yeah, you know. Oh, that's great. Well, oh, obviously, we hear your call. phone buzzing off the hook behind you. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, what do you do? Obviously, you're at home. You said your brother's helping you get the squat rack. I mean, what are you going to do when you get off this call with us? Uh, after this, um, just spend more time. Uh, my mom's still running around the house a little bit right now as, she's, as I speak right now. Uh, you know, definitely give her one more big, long hug. Uh, and just spend the time with my family, even though, you know, it's quarantine. Um, I do have my family um, over live streaming and stuff like that. So just, just spending time with them and just kind of soaking in the moment because it's still still very surreal right now. Um, and just, 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 like I said, I just want to get after it. Hey Matt, did you did you have a chance at all during this process, um, you know, to, through the combine and 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 the obviously workouts leading up to this draft? Did you have a chance to interact with Andrew Thomas at all? Obviously, I'm sure, um, you know, you you watched the first round and, and you saw the Giants selected him out of Georgia. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know him at all? Have you had a chance to talk to him at all? Yeah, uh, actually, we were training down in the same facility down in Exos um uh, before the combine um you know he's a great tackle wow. you know, man, he's very fundamentally sound um you know i definitely learned a lot from him with my just the small time that i had with him and um, um i'm great he's coming to new york he definitely gets thrown around the city to, you know get him a little chopped cheese and everything like that <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah <laughs> i definitely consider him to be a brother especially because uh, even with the little time that we had and um, I'm, I'm just happy he's coming to new york <laughs> Well, I can say this. There's a couple other people that are pretty I mean, How surreal is that? Too. You guys are trading. And, that, and that's Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. Yes, sir. Well, definitely. Got to protect them, man. Can't wait. All right. So, Matt, we last question. We put you on the spot as far think, as yeah. your favorite Giants offensive lineman of all time. That was fun. Yeah. But seriously, as someone who grew up a Giants fan, who was your favorite Giant as a kid? Um, shoot, I love Eli Manning. That was my guy. Uh, I every time oh, you just miss playing with him. <laughs> well, I, I, you too. Yeah, yeah. You can always rely on Eli. Uh, I used to always say that. Um, you know, he's he's tough, tough, hard nosed football player. And you know, um, like you know, uh, see, when I was at school down in, Ma- in Massachusetts and they won that Super Bowl my freshman year, I was ecstatic. You know what I mean? Um, uh, yeah, he he he's uh, he's a Great player. It's a great player. But this day, I, I'm I'm sure once, God willing, these facilities open soon, you'll see him in there. He likes to come in for the free lunch. Nice. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Matt, we appreciate a couple minutes. Congratulations on being a member of the New York Football Giants. Congratulations in what is obviously a very exciting night for you and your family. Thank you. Thank you. Cool stuff, Matt Parrott. Uh, out of the University of Connecticut, selected with the 99th overall pick in the 2020 NFL Draft by the New York Giants.